guys, uh, welcome to this uh, live stream. Uh, we're going to be doing a live run through of using Bolt, a visual scripting tool available from the Asset Store. Uh, it's currently available part of our Plus and Pro promotion that we have going for the month of March and is a f available free if you buy a Plus subscription. So let's jump into the editor and have a look at it straight away. We're going to be looking into using it and adding stuff to our game. So at the moment I have this game but we have no movement so I'm going to add movement and shooting while we're on the live stream. So let's get started with the setup wizard. So if I was to start a project with Bolt and I hadn't done anything beforehand, I would end up with this Bolt setup wizard available. Uh, it will let me run through. I can choose naming schemes. So I can choose if I want to have a human naming scheme or from a programmer from before. I can take the programming naming schemes. So this will make it so that you can find stuff in the search using uh, rigidbody.addForce and stuff like that. So I'm going to just use human naming for, for now. Uh, it will also generate documentation if you need to and generate inspectors and assemblies. So the assemblies are stuff like uh, the specific runtimes of stuff like tile maps and UI. So if you wanna, you can add those to your uh, graph view. And then you also have types. So types are like variables and you can have custom types available too. So if you were to create a script and then add it as a type, you can do that as well. So I've already done this beforehand, so I'm not gonna generate them again. So just to save us a bit of time. So let's have a look at one of the scripts that have already been created within this project. If I go to my macros folder over here in my uh, project view, I can have a look at one of them. So I'll look at the mover one. Now, if I click this uh, button called edit graph, it'll open up the graph and the graph inspector. Now I'm gonna dock the graph inspector at the bottom and I'm gonna dock the graph uh, onto the game view so you can see it in a big view. Now the graph inspector is used to tell us what each object uh, each node within our uh, graph tells us uh, tells us what it does. So for instance, when I click on the start, it tells me that it's called the first time a machine is enabled before any update method. And it will explain lots of uh, valuable information to us by just clicking on it. Now, another thing we need to open is our variables window. So if I go to tools and then go to bolt, oh no, sorry, if I go to window and then variables, sorry, uh, it'll open up this variables window. And I'm going to dock that down the bottom as well because we're going to need that in a bit. Now now that we have sort of the layout for what we're going to create, uh, I'm going to show you what we're actually going to create from a script. So this script was done beforehand. It's our space movement script and shooting script. And if you're not a programmer, it will probably be looking quite intimidating to you at the moment. So let's actually make this using the visual scripting of Bolt and make it so it's a lot simpler to understand. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go to my player and I have no scripts on here at the moment or any visual scripting and I'm going to add a component. So in the add component section, we have the menu called Bolt and I can choose between flow machine, state machine and variables. So a flow machine is the logic. So it chooses, tells us like if we press a button to do this sort of thing. And a state machine is obviously a state machine. So it checks for a state and does stuff dependent on that state. We're going to use a flow machine. Now you'll notice that when I added the flow machine, it also added the variables. This is because we have object variables available just for this object in particular. And it also has automatically added in the Unity default functions like start and update. So this allows us to get straight into the programming. Now, the first thing I'm gonna program is I'm gonna program the speed uh, of moving around. So I wanna use my uh, horizontal and vertical axes uh, available for the input manager and I'm going to have them apply a force but I'm going to have them adjust the velocity of the object. Now I don't want to do the physics movements on an update, I want to do them on a fixed update so I'm going to get rid of this start and update functions. Now I'm going to add my uh, fixed update function by right clicking and then going to uh, events and then I'm going to life cycle and then I'm going to go to fixed update. Now, as we can see here, the fixed update is telling us that it's called every fixed frame rate frame. So that means we won't be going faster if we have a faster frame rate. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a variable. Now, there are tons of different variables we can have with uh, Bolt. So the first one, as you can see down the bottom here is the graph variable. Now, graph variables are local just to the graph. So that means that uh, no other object, none of the other graphs on the object can access that uh, variable. 
Now an object variable is usable by all the graphs on that object. A scene variable is stored into our scene variables over here and can be used by any object within the scene. The application variables is usable by any uh, graph within the application altogether. And then you have save variables as well, which are the same as the application variables, but they are saved to the player preferences after you finish playing the game. So when you quit, it'll save those to, uh, to storage for you. Now for this object, I'm going to be using object uh, variables. And my first object variable is going to be uh, speed. So I'm going to type in speed and then I'm going to press enter and I'll add this variable to, for me. And you'll notice that I also added it to my inspector over here because we're adding it to the object. Now the type depends on what we want. So we want to be adding a floating point number to our um, variable just to make it go a bit faster. So we're going to have a float and I'm going to set my default value to be five just so that we have some sort of uh, starting point. Now I can always go back and change this afterwards if I wanted to. Now to add this variable to my graph I go and right click and I add a unit and then I go to variables and I go to object and then get speed. Now get speed returns the amount that we have set up in our object variable here. Now the other things I need are my inputs so I'm going to go and right click and add a unit and I'm going to search input so as you can see, I can search or I can just click through. And I'm going to input and I want to get my axis and an axis name. Now I need two of these because I want horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to duplicate it and then drag it down. And I'm going to type in horizontal. And I'm going to type in a vertical as well. So those are our axes already set up. Now if you're wondering if this is just a magic word on an ink, um, you can actually find these axes already created in a default Unity project by going to Edit, Project Settings, and Input. And then on the side here, you'll have your horizontal, vertical, and all your different axes that you can use to do the get axis uh, function. Now, we don't need to worry about it too much at the moment. We'll just uh, use the horizontal and verticals. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to uh, store both of these into a vector free. So we want to go Add Unit. And then we want to either search vector free or go through and find it. So vector free, and then we want to create a vector free of X, Y, and Z. So the horizontal will be our X axis, but the vertical, is it going to be our Y axis or our Z axis? Let's work that out now. So if we go to the scene view, we'll notice that the, the Y axis is actually going to move our ship up and down rather than forwards. So if we're in the game view, you'll notice that it doesn't actually change the position of the ship. So our z-axis changes the forwards and back. So we're going to have to set that as our actual forward uh, axis. So in our flow graph, we'll set the vertical to go towards our z. Now you may be wondering why are these uh, objects, these nodes all dimmed? Well, that's because we're not currently connecting them to our logic. But if we don't want them to be dimmed, we can easily just click the, at the top here, dim, and it will just get rid of the dimming. But at the moment, I like to see what I'm actually having the logic go towards. So I'll have the dim on. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to multiply the variable of speed by our vector free. And the way I can do this is I can drag out from the variable and drop, and I want to do uh, multiply. And then I'll drag in the second one, and there we have it. We have A times B, so we'll have our vector free times our speed, and then we need to add this to our velocity. So the final one we need to do is we need to right click, add unit, and then we'll go to player because we already have a rigid body on our player. And then we go to rigid body, and then we want to look for uh, set velocity. So Z velocity is here, and then we can drag the vector new vector free that we have into our velocity, and there we have it. The final thing we need to do is we need to set the fixed update and drag that logic to our set velocity. And now when we have that input, it will go through and check for the input. So let's see this actually playing. So I'll have my whole graph available. And this is one of the cool things about Bolt is that we can edit it while we're playing. So I can go and press play and you'll see the logic going through. And then we have audio as well but the movement doesn't seem to be working because I set the wrong multiply. So we need to go back and change this multiply. Multiply. Uh, we'll right click 
and we'll search multiply and we want this generic multiply. So we'll do the vector free times the speed and then put it into the transform. Now let's check if it works. And if we, so there we go, we, we can move around, but at the moment we can't shoot back. And if we go too far to the side, if we go back too far to the side, we'll actually go off the map and disappear. This is because we currently got the boundary set up, but we haven't actually set them up within the actual uh, player controller.